Welcome to a new episode of our stories dedicated to the great Leonardo da Vinci, painter, man of genius, and universal talent of the Renaissance. The only work of Leonardo that we can admire in Rome is in the collections of the Vatican Museum. Saint Jerome, a powerful image of devotion naturalism. Let's get started. <music> St. Jerome, still in its rough and unfinished state, is one of Leonardo's most enigmatic. We don't know what the destination of this painting was or who commissioned it. We know that when its owner died, the painting passed through several hands. In the 19th century, the painting was found and bought by Napoleon's uncle, Cardinal Joseph Fesch. According to the story, the cardinal found a table divided into two parts. The lower part was the, in the workshop of a Roman junk dealer where it was the lid of a box, while the head of the saint was at his shoemaker's, where it served as a stool for a piano. In fact, Leonardo's work is really cut into five pieces, but we are not sure if this story is true. In any case, on the death of the cardinal, the painting was put up for auction to be finally a purchase by Pope Pius IX for the Vatican Museum. The work probably never fulfilled its religious function, and Leonardo probably took it with him until his death. Therefore, also during his last day in France at the court of Francis I. Saint Jerome is one of the most representative and complex figures in the history of the Church. He is shown as a penitent hermit in the desert. He is dressed in a few rags. In his right hand, he holds the stone he used to beat his chest and with his left hand, he makes a gesture of humility. In front of him, a very sketch the lion, from which St. Jerome had previously pulled a thorn from his paw. St. Jerome, who has a suffering expression, is almost as in a state of ecstasy, facing upwards towards a crucifix not yet painted by Leonardo. His body is painted as a personification of the Passion bare and carved, it hides behind the protruding clavicles. The dry but snappy muscles, the tendons inside, and the long house and bony head are the result of obsessive anatomical research by Leonardo, who was the first person to study anatomy directly on dead corpses. For Leonardo, the expression of feelings was closely linked to the knowledge of anatomy, and for the skull bone, Leonardo used beautiful foreshortening with the twisting of the head to the right and shows all the intensity of the moment and the feelings felt by the penitent Saint Jerome. Among the rocks in the background, you can see a rough sketch of a facade perhaps that of the Basilica Santa Maria Novella in Florence, which symbolically alludes to the church of the Nativity in Bethlehem, where St. Jerome will be buried, mentioned in the Legenda Aurea by Jacopo da Varagine. The rocky landscape still sketched confirms Leonardo's interest in the study of the atmosphere and nature, and recalls that of the Virgin of the Rocks in the Louvre Museum in Paris. The painting has also stylistic affinities with the Adoration of the Magic, now at the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, which is why the Saint Jerome is generally dated to the last years of Leonardo's first day in Florence, 1481-1482, but no information is certain, and who knows if we will ever discover it. A careful examination of the surface of the painting has revealed the presence of Leonardo's fingerprints in the upper left of the composition. Leonardo distributed the color pigments with his fingers in order to soften the sharp contours of the figures. On his walnut wood panel, Leonardo also used brushes and the practice of wiping and blotting. 
Leonardo Saint Jerome in the desert is an absolute masterpiece, but also a work that exalts the spirituality of a great father and doctor of the church. Well, thank you for sharing your time with me. See you soon for another great episode of our stories. But please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.